Hello everybody, it's Mark Carrier again, and today I'd like to speak to you about uh, uh, developing a campaign budget, and I'm going to show you a simple uh, template uh, that I've put together to help you cover all your costs and revenue. All right. When developing your campaign budget, you need to cover both sides of the equation, revenue and costs, to determine your overall cost of sale and profitability. I usually develop a rollout budget based on the estimated response uh, that I anticipate I'll get over a 12-month period. Now, of course, constructing a budget over 12 months assumes you have a large enough uh, target market or universe to work with. Naturally, if you have a small universe, then your time frame will be dependent on the size of your universe and the frequency of deployments you'll utilize to engage with your uh, customers. Now, before we go any further, I can't stress enough that you should develop your campaign budget with the bean counters in your finance department or your business analysts. If you're a SMA, use your accountant. That's what they're there for. All too often, marketers focus on the revenue side and neglect to include all the costs associated with campaigns. Make sure you have included all the costs and represent those costs accurately within your company's usual accounting method. Now, to those CFOs and accountants reading this, you're welcome. Uh, the sample campaign budget uh, that you'll see on your screen shortly is based on a direct mail campaign. However, the principles involved here are the same for any direct response medium you might care to use. Obviously, with different mediums, you'll have some different metrics to consider and include in your budget, you know, particularly on the uh, response side of the equation. However, some metrics like deployment amount, sales conversion, average sales price would remain constant in any campaign budget. As you can see on your screen, you have a sample uh, campaign budget. Now, we'll start with the revenue side. When we look at the revenue side, there are a number of things to consider when putting these numbers together. First is uh, mail amount, uh, and as I said before, it could be any deployment uh, amount that you use for email deployments or letterbox drops or whatever. This would be the number of mailings or other types of deployments depending on the media you use. And when you plug in the number of deployments, remember to consider all the seasonal factors that might come into play, things like statutory or public holidays like uh, the Easter or Christmas periods or school holidays, for example. You know, during these times of the year, you might not want to deploy as much as other times of the year. Response rates. Uh, if you have some history to work with, you'll probably be aware that your response rates are not likely to be static throughout the year. And as we've discussed, especially around the Christmas period uh, through the middle of January, response rates can be lower than other times of the year. You'll see that I've dropped the number of mail deployed as well as the response rate in the example uh, in January and December just for this reason. You may also have some history to suggest that during different times of the year your response rates can be marginally higher than the rest of the year. To illustrate this you'll see that I've increased the response rates in June and July to 1.1 percent. Responders are simply the anticipated number of people that uh, will call you based on the response rate coupled with the number of deployments you send out each month. They aren't the buyers, they are just those potential customers that have called. Hopefully they will turn into buyers, but not everyone who calls you will buy. Many of the non-buyers will turn into non-qualified prospects or they'll find the offer wasn't exactly what they thought it to be. So they'll become non-interested. Net closing percentage. This is the percentage of those responders who actually purchase your product or service and the sale stuck. So. If your particular situation requires you provide a cooling off period or you usually experience returns, you should also include a gross close percentage, as all sales is a percentage of responders, as well as a cancellation number and cancellation percentage in your budget to reach the net sales percentage. If you need to include these metrics, be sure to also include any associated costs in the cost side of the budget. Gross sales price, this price is the total price that a customer would pay for the product or service you select. This would include the cost of any sales incentives you've added to the purchase price and also any sales tax that you might have to collect as well. If you do have to collect tax in your purchase price, then you also have to represent that as a line item in the expense side of the budget. It's best to have your uh, finance department help you with this. 
Net average sales price, this is pretty simple. It's the net sales price after all the sales incentives and or tax has been stripped away. Net sales revenue, uh, this is the total net sales revenue generated. Expenses, uh, on the expense side of the campaign budget, there are basically two areas to consider, staffing and other program costs. This area is usually where you'd likely need the bean counters to help, okay? They know what costs need to be accounted for and which line item they need to be accounted in. You'll especially need their help in covering personnel costs, overhead allocation, and product costs. Personnel costs. In this area, you need to have a line item for staff functions involved in generating the sales and fulfillment of the order. I've kept it simple on the sample with a line item each for telemarketers and marketing management. But if your administration staff will be involved in the sales or fulfillment process, they need to be counted for as well. It may be that not every staff's time is devoted to one particular campaign. And if this is the case, then you need to work out what is a fair and reasonable estimate of the cost associated with their involvement. On costs. On costs are related to costs associated with payroll tax and staff benefits. This is one area that marketers usually forget to factor into the cost side of the equation. I guess many simply don't have costs like this on the radar screen. However, it's definitely a cost and has to be paid and accounted for somewhere. Product cost includes all associated costs with producing your product or service. Unless your product or service is easy to determine, for instance, you buy it in at one price and you on-sell it, you should discuss and agree on the product costs you should use in your budget with your finance department. There could be things you may not have considered that impact on the product costs, so it's best to have a clear understanding and agreement early on. Direct mail costs. For simplicity's sake in this budget, I've bundled all associated costs related to list purchase, offset printing, and you know things like stationery and uh, envelopes, letter shop, that'd be the laser printing, folding and insertion, postage lodgement, preparation, etc. Postage as well. Uh, you should have a separate spreadsheet to support the bundling of these costs into a unit cost. Just be sure that you've covered everything, all right? Many mail houses base their costs on the number of units that they'll run at any one time. So if your quantities are different month to month, their costs may change and you'll need to reflect these different costs in any particular month as well, okay? Telephone costs. Uh, this one can be a little tricky to figure out, particularly if you're running a number of campaigns using the same toll-free number as part of uh, your call to action. You should probably figure out with your finance department a figure as a cost per call. A simple way to do this would be to estimate the average time in minutes your staff will be on a sales call and then multiply that by the phone plan cost per minute. Once you figure that out, get multiply it again by 1.5 just to be on the safe side. Operating expenses and supplies. This line item identifies any particular costs associated with expenses or supplies you need to make that sale happen. Now this could be where you include all your fulfillment costs to get the product or service to the consumer. Corporate overheads. Now this is the campaign portion. Yes, this should be captured too, and having said this though, your company may capture these costs in your overall marketing budget. If that's so, you don't necessarily need to include these costs in your campaign budget. If you do, then you'll need to figure out what proportion of the overheads should be assigned to each campaign. I appreciate there's a lot involved in that campaign, but if you need to get it right, as you should, you need to cover all the costs accurately, you need to cover all the revenue side accurately, so you have the best chance of success for your campaign in making money. Any of the uh, templates that I've uh, displayed, budget templates and things like that, uh, they're all available on my blog, so I invite you to go there and you can download them from my blog or find a link to them and you can reach that at www.whatsaleadworth.com or uh, simply send me an email if you're on LinkedIn. You'll find me there, Mark Carrier, M-A-R-C-C-A-R-R-I-E-R-E. -R -R -E. Good luck and have fun.